Hello and welcome to Topic 5 Operations Management. If you have a look in the textbook you'll find this on 611 to 731. Today we're going to have a go through Topic 5.1 Production Methods. This is going to have two parts and when we're done on this one we're going to jump on to 5.2 Cost and Revenue. Let's get into it. Eh? On here I've made a, a summary sheet for you that I'd like you to have a look over um, before you have a look at uh, your class stuff. Also have a look at your, your pre-reading notes as well. In the description bar you'll find down the bottom. This one here has like one main learning outcome for you to get into and I'll go into that in a bit more detail. But most of it's around sort of four marks, maybe six marks depending how you get the questions. These ones in here have the advantages and disadvantages and they talk about the capital and labour intensive stuff. Pretty much this is all declarative today, so we're going to have lots of detail about job, batch, mass and flow, and there's no procedural stuff, there's no sort of skills based thing for it uh, to get into for the doll. Alright, let's jump straight into it. Eh? Some of the videos I've got for you is this one here about a production worker, and they're having a look at the cheese industry in New Zealand, and they do stuff in batches and in job, and also getting some, uh, some mass production with their little bell cheeses. Really good video, goes for about five or six minutes, puts things in context for you. So if you want an idea about what I'm getting into today, have a read over these ones. And I stuck the tiny URLs if you just want to type that one in, open up a new tab and have a look. This one here is also how they make uh, potato chips. Really big fan of these sort of videos. Uh, I love the one about how they make chewing gum. The chewing gum stuff is really, really fun. And if you want to see it sort of put into a, a big scale context for you, have a look at the Mega Factory series from Lego. Uh, this one's pretty good. It's the first section of it, and it shows how all the products uh, get molded together, and how they're put into place, and then how it's all sort of done with robotics in a big mass production setting. It's actually pretty good fun. What do you have to know for today? Pretty much, uh, can you describe the job batch mass and flow? Can you compare between all the different four production methods? Five if you want to count line and flow. And the applications part, can you apply it to a case and then also talk about if they had to change from say job to mass or go back from say flow down to down to job if they're changing the way they're doing their branding and that kind of thing. Let's get straight into it now. I'll go to the definitions. On here, the keywords I'm going to use a lot is job production. And these are one-off sort of things. These are one-off um, production methods. So, so if you're like building a house or you're building like a diamond ring, say for a wedding or doing a speedboat, the idea is you might do the whole part in one section and then go on to the next stage, do the whole section, then move on to the whole stage, and then do a whole section and then move on to the whole stage. So you put the concrete in, you build up the, uh, the wooden frames and so forth, then do all the wire electrical, stick the roof on, put the cladding, that kind of thing, then the bricks, and they all have their own little sort of completed stages as they go along. This one's a little different to batch production. Batch production is like you're doing them in big groups. So you might have four things that happen, and then they move on to the next four things, and then they move on to the next four things, and they move on to the next four things. Think about Subway sandwiches. You pick all the different, say, three people to pick different breads, then it goes to the different meats, then it goes to the different salads, then it goes to the different condiments and stuff at the end, then you wrap it all up. Note with this one, this is job is kind of like ones and ones and ones. This is like fours and fours and fours. Because you're doing them in bigger quantities, you can make more at the same time. So you can see it's sort of stepping up in the, the numbers of things you can make, the output. And this one is meant to be sort of a pausing between each section. This one here is sort of like in contrast to these two. The line and flow is like a continuous moving along. So it's like did, 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 dots going as it all goes all the way through. The idea is there's not meant to be any sort of stopping in between. Uh, they really want to make lots of quantity of the same thing. Once they've standardized the product and they've made it exactly the same, like they make the same iPhone every single time as they go along, they just want it to continuously flow so they can pump it out, get it on the trucks and send it out. Um, you may have seen the example about making cars for this one. And lastly you've got mass production. And this is where you're just going to get into larger quantities, so like ten thousands or millions and stuff, nuts and bolts and screws or potato chips, those kind of things. Job and batch, pausing in between, line and flow, no pausing in between. That's sort of the general idea, but there's more to it. I'll show you in some examples. Okay, if we have a look here, like with uh, making houses and job production, what are the main good bits about this? Well, you can get a lot of quality behind it, so you can really make a lot of effort to get that stage done before it goes to the next stage and the next stage. This allows you to have a lot of uniqueness with your product. 
Because I'm building it up in stages to meet exactly what the customer wants, I can specifically do the concrete floor, I can specifically do the framing on the outside of the house, I can specifically put the right roof on there, so the product really meets a specific customer need. When you have quality and uniqueness, you tend to be able to increase the prices a lot. This does allow you to have a lot of flexibility. The flexibility behind it is you can change each of the stages because you stop in between each of the processes. In comparison to, say, doing line and mass and uh, flow production, where it's continuously moving along, it's hard to change those processes because there's no stopping in between. Of course, you're going to have some big time labor costs with this. If you're going to pay for people to do uniqueness and quality, you're going to have a lot of total fixed costs and potentially total variable because they want to have good materials in what they're doing. So this is going to make your break-even point change. It can be very time-consuming too. If you want quality and uniqueness, you're going to have to give your workers a lot of time to make it happen. And overall, you're going to get fewer economies of scale. So your unit cost for each part doesn't really have a lot of benefit out of the main five to make it a lot cheaper. Why do you do job production? You want to get uniqueness and quality, and usually sort of link to a really strong brand, for instance. Jump on to this one here, batch production. And production production uh, is... Just think of that Subway sandwiches. Now, I'm a meatball fan. Give me sort of the parmesan and oregano, a bit of mayonnaise, salt and pepper, lettuce, a bit of onions, maybe some tomato and so forth. Good sandwich for me. It was a chicken teriyaki for a while, but I'll go to the meatballs. Odd here. Um, this one here gets much better economies of scale. Because you're making them in batches and you're doing them in unit orders and you can store the stuff ready for each of the changes, um, you can start getting a bit better then, in theory, than job production. So you make a unit cost can start decreasing. This allows for good specialization, so you can have the person who's good at making, like getting the breads ready to go, the person who's good at putting all the salads and the condiments, and the person who wraps it, and finally the person who does the cash register and so forth. The division of labor is pretty cool when you get into batch production, because it's a stopping in stages, and you can get things prepared in each unit before it moves on. It allows for a lot of variety, so think about all the varieties of bread you can pick, all the varieties of meats you can pick, all the salads you can pick. Because of this, you can change up and really meet what the customer wants. When you put this in comparison with like line and flow and mass, it's the same thing going along. Henry Ford said you can have whatever colour you want as long as it's black. In Subway and Hungry Jacks, you can have it your way. What does this do for the worker though? What's really bad about this? Well, a lot of boredom can kick in. So it can really demotivate the worker. If they're aiming to get into higher parts of Maslow or change up some of the things in Hertzberg, um, the boredom's just going to go, this is not the fun part for me. Um, it can often be a little bit inflexible. You might think, how's it getting flexible and this sort of stuff? Well, you can have whatever you like, as long as it's one of the six main breads. You can have whatever you like, as long as it's one of the seven main meats and, and like, you know, turkey stuff and everything else. Or the salads. You can't change out of those batch things that have been designed. And most importantly, the storage of goods. Because you're going to have these different variety parts here, you're going to have to store all this stuff. And storage just means that production capacity, means you can overall decrease your useful space within your production area, and this means you're going to have some more costs added to it. So if you want to have variety, you're also going to have storage of goods. If you get onto mass, line, and flow, I've sort of grouped these together a bit. And yeah, I know it says Coke bottling, but down here it's meant to be like the Mount Franklin bottles. I've got the blue lids, I'm hoping I'm roughly there. What's this good for? Large economies of scale. Because you're making the same thing, you standardize the product and you're pumping it out so regularly, you can make a unit cost decrease over time. You can really bring the big five into place, particularly the technology part and the purchasing part, like buying in bulk. Also, this adds on to the specialization. You can really get your division of labor, engineers, unskilled, skilled workers all in different spots, and you can really specialize into one particular product to make it really strong. This can help you with your branding strategies. This can also help you with decreasing your TFC and your TVC. This is great for large orders. So if you want to pump out a million, put them in giant boxes and send them around the world. It's a really good way of making large amounts of profit because of your large economies of scale. India and China is doing this fantastically right now. You can have whatever you want, buy it on Alibaba or AliExpress or eBay and get them sent across to you. Here's 10,000 things and you watch the price drop as a result from going from 100 down to 10,000. What's the big problem? Again, a bit of boredom to this. So, yeah, it's exciting when you first get in there, but after a month of doing it, you're just seeing the same stuff pump out. A lot of it's automated. So the part for the worker, you know, you're really starting to move away from self-actualization on this one. 
We might get it with the setup part, but then after that it's just running it through and it starts to be the same thing. Chat to any engineers out there who operate big machinery and you'll think, wow, this is great, then after a while it's just really like a big noisy machine. That's a hassle to fix when it breaks down. Um, the setup and run-up costs, sorry, run costs can be really huge. So setting these up, the machines cost millions of dollars, maybe even hundreds of millions of dollars, depending on what you're doing in some of the mining areas. And once it's set up and got going, this means you're going to have a huge, huge, huge um, like R&D sort of cost, if you think about the product life cycle. We've got a huge setup cost, so your TFC is going to have to get broken down over the lines for quite a long time until you get recover those things, and your price skimming has to kick in. A lot of different problems. And most importantly, it's really sort of inflexible. You can have exactly what you want as long as it's the same thing. So the Coke bottles come out, it's always going to be sort of your 330 or 375 mil bottles. Variance, that means setting it up and changing it all over again. So if you want to have large orders with good specialization, yeah, you're going to be a lot of inflexibility and a lot of boredom that goes into it. So there's some good costs and benefits in those ones. Have a look on here. I've taken this one from Joanne Pugsley, and here's the, the website for it. She's done an excellent job of just sort of summarizing it in a nice little area for you. So I'll put this up for you. Feel free to pause and have a read over just to summarize it, because we're going to have a look at a case, uh, some classifying stuff next. All right. Here in this one here, um, identify the most appropriate production methods for each of these different eight styles. And can you give me one advantage and one disadvantage? Have a crack and have a go through. We can do some dull classifying stuff. Um, feel free to pause it now. Okay, um, this one here, uh, table saw. I reckon this one, you're looking at maybe uh, maybe job or batch. Uh, batch. You probably don't want to go mass on these things because it's quite complex. But in reality, you could do mass. You're not going to be wrong if you stated this one. Um, but if you do mass, it's going to have huge, huge setup costs. It's a really complex product. Uh, with the trucks, you might be looking at flow, maybe even uh, job production if it's a really specialized one. Um, you're not wrong if you pick mass, it's just you're yeah, going to argue it again. Really big setup costs, really big running costs for these ones. Uh, the screws here, I'd probably go with mass on these ones to pump them out. I don't think you're probably going to do job production. You could, but then you've got to state the advantage and disadvantages. You could make logical sense, but um, try to go with the obvious one first. Uh, with the sweet Stratocaster, uh, the Fender guitars, um, one of these guys, you probably do job if it's going to be a specialized customer order. Or you might do each of the different stages. So when you're putting the, the nut head, uh, sorry, the nut and the machine head and all that sort of stuff together, you might do them in batches before you move along. So I reckon we'll be, we'll be batch on that one. You could do flow, for instance, if you're trying to get them out in mass, but the quality is going to go, you know, downhill. Uh, good old Coke cans. Um, I reckon it's give that on mass. Probably not job, um, but it's up to you how you argue it. I'd go with mass on that one. Uh, the PlayStations, these will be done in batches, maybe flow. Uh, remember there was a special one that if you won it like at the, the World Series or something you could win um, a job one that was specially designed but I mean with the PS3s they just slide on the covers and all the parts are the same so the exterior is probably just the one part that's different. Uh, laptops on these ones here, uh, you're probably going in with Flow funnily enough, yeah if you have a look at how they put um, the Apple computers together everything's done like in a continuous flow so once I've done it, pull the next one and they're doing it as they through. You could do them in batches and sections as you build them up. So if you look at the Dell website, you'll have a look how they do their uh, production facilities done in batches. And lastly, this sweet looking cake, which has got really nice looking almonds. I'd love to have a slice of cake now. Um, I'm guessing probably your jobs on these ones. Uh, you could get, I reckon, in batches to make it all nice and good, depending how you do it. Um, but if you do it at home, maybe a job. If you do it in a production facility, maybe batches or flow. If you could pick out on this one and feel pretty confident that you're picking the right, the main one first and talking about sort of that uniqueness and quality um, against sort of your boredom, your inflexibility and your storage goods costs, um, each of these will sort of get you your sort of four to six marks. Let's see if we can put it in context now. So this one is analyzing errors for some dull stuff. Um, really nice place called Ferguson uh, Pierre Bakery, wedding cakes. I don't know who they are, I just like to look at their cakes, I thought they were pretty cool. This one here, should they or shouldn't they use flow production on their wedding cakes? Feel free to pause it now and write down some notes as we go through. All right, because it says analyze, this is a level three, so you're gonna have to give six marks on this one here. So you need to give one advantage and one disadvantage as it goes in. And also make sure you recommend for two marks at the end. If I was going through this one here, 
I want to be defining what flow production is, so a continuous production method where there are no stopping in between each of the stages and it's designed to make large quantities of a standardized product. Um, my case application would be the Ferguson Player Cakes. Um, at this stage, just picking out these pictures on here and if you look at the writing, they're making wedding cakes, as you see in there. And I'm going to be arguing that they shouldn't be doing this. Um, one main strength of them adopt, uh, sorry, keeping their job production is they're allowed to keep their, their quality and keep their brand, um, their brand, uh, my brain's gone dumb there for a second, uh, their brand um, loyalty and their strength. On here, um, this would be shown through the customer testimonials, and this sort of backs up that people really like the fact they've stayed in job production. The disadvantage of doing this is they go into flow production is they're going to lose quality and they're also going to lose some, some of the uniqueness. These products here are made very specifically for customer orders. If they get into that sort of change up, it's going to make a bit of a hassle for them. Um, I'd look at the pictures here to sort of back up for my examples to say why they shouldn't do it. Overall, the recommendation would be is don't go into flow production. Flow production um, does cause a lot of changes up from the brand they were hoping to have and the brand they could have in the future. Um, this is designed to be really special, unique for the customer, and I'd recommend not getting into flow production. Alright, here's the um, sort of exam style question for you that you might see. I've got here, this is the tiny URL, so if you want to pause it, um, have a look here uh, about the Ferrari factory in uh, Manello, Italy. Or if you can't be bothered, just have a read of this sort of section here. Two key questions, can you describe the production method? And can you also discuss if they should change into flow production for eight marks? And I've done an eight mark rather than six just to get you to get those two advantages and two disadvantages to come out. All right, let's have a look at the question. Um, describe Ferrari's main production method. This one here would be uh, job or batch, depending how you looked at the video. It probably wouldn't be um, flow or line or mass on this one. As long as you talk about the car and you refer back to the video or the stimulus material here, you've got your two marks to get it up. All right, if I was doing the, the flow production, continuous again, no stopping, standardized product, and I'd probably say back that this is not what Ferrari is currently doing as my case sample, uh, case reference. My two advantages, I'd be looking at um, adopting flow production will allow them to increase quantity, also allow them to increase economies of scale. But by adopting the flow production, this is the should part rather than the shouldn't before, um, you will definitely get a decrease maybe in the brand loyalty, potentially in the quality. Um, the uniqueness of the car uh, might decrease because it's now not meeting particular customer orders, it's meeting a standardized product orientation that um, Ferrari's worked out that they believe is the right thing rather than the customer picking it for them. Overall, the recommendation is I recommend not to do it. Uh, it'll take away from their brand loyalty and take away from their brand. It'll also take away from potentially the motivation of the workers there. A lot of the boredom could have kicked in. Um, overall, Ferrari should not adopt flow production. All right, we'll jump on to the last bit. Um, on the description bar below, there's a worksheet if you want to work through, and also the IB questions in your textbook. Have a read over 5.1, and also if you can't be bothered getting the textbook, you don't have it with you, have a read in the description again. I've got the big summary for you in PDF. And do you reckon you can now describe job, batch, mass, and flow? Do you reckon you can compare between them? And do you reckon you could apply it to a case? So if you're doing job into, say, flow, or you're doing batch into job, or mass into backhand batch, what would be the implications onto the business? Finally for you, if you want some extension stuff, um, have a look at cell production, how it's done to reduce boredom. If you have a look at Wikipedia, I'm going to go into that in, in the 5.1b. And have a look at Tom Savoy. This guy changed the way production was done and the way he looked at things. Have a read about him if you want bit, you know, some extension stuff. And if we get back into the fundamentals, have a look at Tutor to You and Biz Ed uh, for some more detail. That's it from me, and I'll see you in 5.1b.